Now, you're considered, I'm not sure if you're comfortable with the term, you're considered a conservative commentator, but you actually have quite a uh, racy history. You were one of Australia's first uh, sex therapists. I've heard that a lot in uh, other interviews uh, that, that I've watched you in. That's how you're described. But I've always been curious, what does a sex therapist actually do? Oh, look, I was a sex therapist for about a minute 40 years ago. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Um, well, I was originally a clinical psychologist and, and then uh, decided to specialise in sex therapy. And you're far too young, Tim, to know this, but this was back in the 1970s and it was a time when you weren't allowed to talk publicly about sex at all. There was no information. People were incredibly ignorant about it. And... A lot of my job was actually just giving people sexual information. Um, I start a sex therapist works with people and deals with sexual problems. But in actual fact, um, at that time, the biggest problem was just lack of information and people's embarrassment and discomfort with sex. And so a lot of what I did was just giving them the facts to, getting them, to get them to feel comfortable talking about sex. And I'm, I constantly run into people of my sort of age who say, you taught me everything I know. You know? So that's what I did. I, I made a very deliberate decision. I was actually working as a therapist for a little while, but just made a decision to use the media and to go out in the media and teach people about sex. So I'd spent I did a master's research on teaching women to become orgasmic. And I sat there with woman after woman saying, well, there's this thing called the clitoris here, you know, telling them the basic stuff they should know. Um, and then I thought, this is madness. I have to get on television and say, this is the clitoris, <laughs> which is what I did. And I had 10 years in Australia talking about um, sex on television and radio. I had two years banned from live television and radio because they just the, the authorities decided it was all too much um i wasn't so, and they couldn't even ever tell me what i'd said that was wrong it was just you know i talked about things like masturbation i talked about topics you weren't allowed to talk about then uh, and i had my own radio program I, so i had a very racy beginning and that confuses people when they want to put me in this conservative box because i'm certainly not conservative when it comes to sex amongst other things uh, and I actually regard myself as forward thinking and the, the rabid left who are stuck in the feminism of the 1970s. And they're the ones who are conservative, in my view. They haven't moved on beyond that sort of crazy gender politics, which is holding us all back. And today you're uh, a dating coach, uh, more specifically an online dating coach. Uh, uh, without giving uh, too much of your trade secrets away, uh, what are the mistakes that people make with dating that uh, might make them uh, come, to, come to you for advice? Well, I, I mean, that all started because friends started coming to me and asking for help with their profiles. And this is not so much on Tinder, but on the you know, the profiles where you have to actually write a proper introduction to yourself. And a lot of people find that very difficult. I work mainly with people over 50. I mean, although I have 30-year-olds and 20-year-olds. But most young people, I say, go go onto Tinder, go onto one of the phone apps where you don't have to put much information. And it's all about the photo. Um, but um, the older, you know, the, the other websites, that it's people find it very hard to describe themselves. And that comes very naturally to me. I've been mean, writing in the mainstream of media for 40 years. I've been writing about relationships for 40 years. If I don't know something about what attracts, you know, one sex to the other and who does. Uh, and so I really enjoy that, helping people put together information about that. But it's, it, it's not easy. I mean, lots of women particularly are delusional about the sort of person they're likely to, that they need and they want in their lives. And I, I think there's this interesting problem with, so many women spending a long period single before they even think of settling down. And then they, when they come along to me in their 30s, they, they had this enormous shopping list, which is a compilation of every good quality and every man they've ever been with. And little do they, little do they realize they're actually less likely to get that top alpha bloke than they ever were because uh, they've left, they've run a bit late in terms of the competition for those most desirable men. Um, and they, you know, they don't realise their market value has actually gone down during that period. I'm very interested in what happens to women in their 30s 
and the fact that there's so much being written about where are all the good men, you know, what's wrong with these men. And to me, there's a lot of things that are painfully obvious about what's wrong with the women. They're too demanding. They have unrealistic expectations. And I can totally understand why a lot of men are running a mile. And if... Uh... Go, big child. You know, I mean, I, to me, that's a logical position to take. Uh, if I was a young man, I'd be thinking very seriously about whether marriage was ever in my interest. You've obviously witnessed uh, dating change quite a bit over the years. It used to be the uh, dinner party or even the nightclub where um, young couples met. But obviously it's it's online mainly these days. There's been a massive growth. Of, what's your uh, opinion on this shift? Has it been for the better or has it uh, unveiled new problems? Oh, look, it's problematic. But the, I mean, the difference is people used to get married in their early 20s right out of school, right out of uni, that's where they all got together. And then it was much easier. Everyone was single, people paired off, you know, lots of people found someone suitable for them. Uh, if we now have a time, we've never had a time in our history where more people are single at different periods of their lives. You know, there, lots of people are still single in their 30s. By the time they hit their 40s, there's people coming out of divorces and so on. Um, so... And there's nothing better than the internet and the phone apps. And all. I mean, we, we've got this magical opportunity for that, those big pools of people to get together. And the minute I heard about online dating, I thought, this is fantastic. Um, and I was, you know, newly divorced at the time and, and I went online and I did online dating on and off for seven years and met my partner that way. And I mean, I, it really worked for me. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to give people a chance to connect, provided they, they're realistic about it. You know, it's not like if you're buying a house in Sydney, you wouldn't think you'd go out on a Saturday morning and look at three houses. and If they didn't work out, you'd give up. You'd realise it was, you know, you had to go out there and you had to go to lots of auctions and you had to keep looking. And finding someone who's compatible with you is infinitely harder than buying a house, um, you know or buying a refrigerator. People put more time into choosing a fridge or a car than they do into choosing a partner. And that's madness. You know, the difference, the difference is that fridge has to like you too. You don't have to just like it. And that's tricky. The online dating coaching is my day job, uh, but it's not my passion. I mean, that's, that's how I'm earning a bit of income while I devote myself almost totally to trying to save men. <laughs> and uh, my work in terms of men's rights has become the big um, goal in my life, the big passion in my life, and, and the online dating luckily enables that to be possible because it earns me a bit of income. But you don't make any money making video blogs, as you know. <laughs> yeah, you've got to still find a way to pay the bills somehow. Yeah. So there you are. But, I mean, I, look, the online dating is fun. I really enjoy doing that. I love talking to people I love helping people and you know I'm very romantic soul deep down and so I've, you know when people end up meeting someone and you know getting married or settling down together I find that very thrilling so this has been an unshackled fast please like comment and subscribe while you're here grab our free ebook at the unshackled battlefield.net and visit the unshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary